Gould from CA World Wi-Fi Inc. And today we're going to give you a course from CA World Wi-Fi in Basics of Wi-Fi. The first course is Wi-Fi 101 Basics. We'll start with parts. The parts are a transmitter, an antenna, an Ethernet cable, a power over Ethernet or DC injector, a router, a modem, and an internet connection. Now just for an example of a transmitter, this is a Wi-Fi access point, client device, bridge, a repeater. It has all those different names. And again, we call it a radio. Uh, the reason we call it a radio is because that's what it is. Just like in your car, you have a radio that transmits or receives in AM, FM, and even XM satellite radio. We'll get into those differences when it comes into Wi-Fi later on. The next item on the, on the list is an antenna. It looks something like this, perhaps, which is an omnidirectional antenna. And there are other types. There's sector antennas, panel antennas, Yagi antennas, and again, we'll go into those later on in the class. We just want you to know what they look like. By the way, outside of the United States, an antenna may be called an aerial. The next item is an Ethernet cable, RJ45. Very typical of what you find in any networking situation. It's an RJ45 connector and a length of cable. The next item is a PoE or DC injector. That's what puts power and data through the same one Ethernet cable that we just looked at. And it may look like this. It's a power supply with two inputs, one for data and one for power. Everyone should know what a router is. That's what you have right now at home or in your office. That's what provides IP addresses to your users and your equipment. A modem could be a cable modem, satellite modem, or a telephone modem, and you get that from your internet provider. And again, your internet connection from any one of those providers. After that, we have some optional accessories. For example, a lightning and surge protector. This may protect your equipment from lightning strikes. After that, we have a splitter an antenna splitter so that we can add more than one antenna to any particular transmitter. We have other network accessories. We have Network Access Manager, uh, which we'll look at later. A video camera, which may look very much like this. This happens to be a small bullet camera. And after that, another option would be an enclosure to protect your equipment. Uh, most, in, in most cases, it would be the PoE injector from the weather, from water, from dust, and this is what that would look like. Let's talk about now some Wi-Fi physics. There are three unlicensed frequencies in the United States. 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and 5.8 gigahertz. It's all unlicensed Wi-Fi bands. Now, 900 megahertz has great penetration qualities. The reason for that is that when it broadcasts a sine wave, the sine wave is very relaxed, and looks like this, has terrific penetration for trees, concrete, etc., etc. 2.4 gigahertz is most Wi-Fi equipment as well as microwave ovens, cordless mice, etc. And their side, that sine wave looks a little bit more like this. You can see it's a little bit more pronounced, so it doesn't have the penetration benefits, but it does have good distance and throughput. The other frequency is 5.8 gigahertz, and we use that for long-range wireless backhaul. And again, that sine wave is even more pronounced. But it's a good frequency to use for long-range backhaul because it's not, not used by very many pieces of equipment. And so we'll get into a little bit more detail later on as far as equipment and frequency. Now, transmitters have different power ratings. A typical off-the-shelf Linksys or D-Link or Netgear router has a power of 30 milliwatts. It's not very great in distance as far as the transmit power, maybe 200, maybe 300 feet. But let's talk about what would happen if you increase the power of a transmitter, an access point, to 150 milliwatts or 500 milliwatts or even 1,000 milliwatts, which is equal to 1 watt. If we had 150 milliwatt transmitter at each end on the send and receive, your distance here might be, oh, un unlimited line of sight, uh, two to four miles. In 500 milliwatts with one at each end, we might have an unrestricted 
uh, transmission of three to, let's say, six miles. And with a thousand milliwatts or one watt transmitter at each end, we can go anywhere from six all the way to perhaps 10 or 13 miles. And again, that's unrestricted line of sight with the same power at each end to send and receive. So that when the send sends a signal that says, I've got Wi-Fi access, do you want to connect? If you have the same power at the other side and you say yes and I want to go to Google, you're meeting in the middle. Okay? If you have a 500 milliwatt, again, you're meeting in the middle, but with the less power on the other end, the 500 milliwatt's got to send you a signal a little further to reach you. And again, with one watt transmitter, with the three at the six to ten mile range, if we have a lower power transmitter on the receiving side, that one watt transmitter has to go almost all the way to to the receiver to be able to make that handshake, that bi-directional link. Stop. Let's go back to the antennas or the aerials for a moment. And those are not measured in power, in milliwatts. An antenna is measured by gain or dB gain, and dB stands for decibels. The higher the dB gain in an antenna, the longer that antenna is going to be able to broadcast the signal from the power behind it. Now, when we talk about range, we're looking at something like this. And you can see, the further we get away from it, the smaller the signal gets. Uh, obviously, an antenna, in this particular case, it's a looking like a Yagi antenna, but an antenna has two patterns, horizontal and vertical beam width. So if we take a look at, for example, let's say a panel antenna, which is a square antenna, the horizontal beam may look something like this, coming out from the middle of the antenna, and this is measured in degrees, and it may be 65 degrees depending on which way the antenna is pointing or the particular antenna. The vertical beam is going to be a little bit more narrow. A vertical beam sends out something like this. So when we talk about horizontal and vertical, horizontal is parallel to the ground. So that signal is going to be wide or wider depending on the antenna pattern. The horizontal or the vertical beam is this way. We're talking about the V-shape, uh, parallel to the ground again, but so many degrees up and so many degrees down. And again, antenna patterns are measured in degrees. Antenna uh, are rated in dB or decibel gain. Now we're going to talk about interference, transmit interference. Well, what do we mean by that? There are several things that might be considered interference. One of them could be mountains. One of them could be trees. One of them could be buildings. Also, what else creates interference? Actually, rain, or fog, or other transmitters create interference with your signal. And what does that do? Well, you remember we talked about the sine wave. Let's use a 2.4 sine wave as we looked at it before. If we have a mountain here, that sine wave is going to stop right here and bounce back. It's never going to penetrate. If we have trees, if it goes through the tree, and that sine wave is going to go like this, and then it's going to be a little shape, off shape. You're going to look at it as some signal, some noise. When we get to a house, it depends on the construction. A wood frame building, the signal will very easily penetrate it. If it's metal, again, it's going to bounce off the side. And again, when we talk about rain, whether it's heavy rain or fog or snow, Again, that does something to the signal. Instead of being a nice clean sine wave, now it goes off in all kinds of directions. And it's called reflective path. And we get some signal, some noise. And again, with another radio that's broadcasting not only in the same frequency, but on the same channel, it's like me talking in a party. And if you're trying to listen to me and there's a lot of noise and other chatter going on around, it's hard to hear or focus on what I'm saying because you've got other people cross-talking. Same thing with something else that may be another transmitter or a microwave oven or a cordless telephone in the same frequency. Wi-Fi is broken up into different channels depending on the frequency. For example, in 2.4 gigahertz, we have 11 channels, 1 through 11. And the true only non-overlapping channels 
R1, 6, and 11. Channel 2 overlaps a little bit, channel 3 overlaps, 4, 5, 6 is here, and then you have 7, 8, 9, 10, and of course channel 11. So you can see where if you have multiple Wi-Fi access points in one situation, the best way to do this is to set them up in channel 1, 6, and 11, and as you get further away from the first access point, we go back to number 1, then number 6, and number 11. When we do a, a Wi-Fi deployment, we like to scan and see what else is out there in the neighborhood, some uh, Linksys or D-Link or Netgear routers may be broadcasting on one of these channels and we don't want to use that for our access point because we'll automatically add noise. In 5.8 for wireless backhaul, as we mentioned before, it's hardly used, it's never used in Wi-Fi equipment like a laptop or a desktop. It's always used for wireless backhaul, it's uncluttered, but in that frequency we have 13 channels to choose from and it makes broadcasting much cleaner and much easier to do for long distances if we use 5.8. We now have the million dollar question which everybody asks. How far is the signal going to go? And it's impossible for anybody to tell you with a hundred percent guarantee that your signal is going to get from point A to point B with any specific piece of equipment. It's just impossible to say because there are too many variables that come into play. Again, trees, buildings, terrain, weather, uh, other equipment out there. The best way to determine how far your equipment is going to go is by putting up your access point, whatever you've decided, first. Walk away with your laptop and continue to try to ping that device, connect to the internet, or make a connection. If you have a laptop that says you've got three bars, four bars, or five bars, you can keep walking away and doing it again until you get to a point where you have no more signal. At that point, you probably decide that, okay, if I have to cover another thousand or two thousand or three thousand feet, here's a good place to put a repeater or perhaps another access point if you have another internet connection there. So again, nobody can tell you how far. They can give you guesstimates, they can give you ranges and expectations, but a physical on-site inspection, a site survey, is really the only way to do it, and you can do it yourself. We suggest taking one of our pieces of equipment. You can use it for 30 days. Put it up there, deploy it, and find out how much coverage you actually get. You probably want to know why you should use CA World Wi-Fi for your expertise and your equipment. Well, I can tell you briefly, we offer our clients free and unlimited tech support for as long as you own our equipment. Let me say it again. It's free and it's unlimited. If you want to buy equipment cheaper, certainly you can. You can go online. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from a number of websites. But when you have a problem, whether it's an installation problem or an equipment problem, you tell me who you're going to speak to at Amazon to get support. There are other companies out there that offer similar equipment to ours. We don't think that they offer the same level of expertise, the same level of support we do. We are customer concentric. We are driven by our customers. If our customers are successful, we're successful. Go look at our website. You'll see how many referrals we have, how many references we have, and what our clients say about CA World Wi-Fi, and then you'll make your decision why you should decide on us. And finally, if you're wondering what you should do next, I can tell you to call us at 561-245-7823, or go onto our website at www dot caworldwifi.com. If you call us, we will certainly give you all the help that you need. Whether you do business with us or not, we don't want you to make a mistake doing business with somebody else. If we can do business with you, the next thing we want you to do is give us your order. When you get the order, I want you to collect it at your desk. We will then come into your computer and remotely program the equipment for you, for your specifications, and then you can go ahead and climb up on a ladder to your heart's content. If you have problems, you know, just give us a call. We're there for you whenever you need us. My name is David Gould from CA World Wi-Fi. I'd like to thank you very much.